I think uh, it is essential in terms of the teaching process that uh, primarily we have professors to serve as presidents and chancellors of universities. That's a basic philosophy I believe in. And by the same token, I think if possible, any president or chancellor ought to keep himself into the teaching process uh, for two reasons. And this is the reason that I do it. Uh, one, I want the students, at least those few with whom I deal with, to deal with me as Lee Dreyfus, professor of mass communications, and not as chancellor of the university. That is, they get to know you uh, intellectually and as a disciplinarian in your uh, subject matter in a way that I think uh, they can never get to know you as chancellor. Now, what's important here then is that I keep my hand in, in part to know what's going on in my institution. I think you can't get that far away from where the basic action is. And with all of the changes that have come in the modern uh, university, the basic action in my mind is still the interrelationship between the teacher and the student, the professor and the uh, learner. As one looks at the uh, communicative disorders area, which is clearly one of our uh, nationally known uh, segments of our university, it also follows through with this uh, learning and doing uh, concept. In uh, this particular case, it involves deaf education and with a graduate student, uh, D. Leitner here, who is obviously, uh, with her specialized training, helping this young man, Ron Sanders, a local boy who needs the help. But at the same time, uh, she is being helped because here she is actually practicing her professional uh, training. And without that practice, uh, she would not be uh, really uh, very good out in the field. And so here is the dual advantage to both. Here's the community being served, and here's the student learning while doing.
also believe that if you prepare a real uh, development of the imagery of the institution, in other words, you build a name, notoriety, if you uh, do not see the term as a negative one, that this will bring you better students, this will bring you uh, better faculty. If I can run some 100 or so public addresses in a given year, uh, many of them away from the campus, uh, I will do so in order that they begin to identify uh, me with the campus. Uh, I think that uh, this can be misunderstood. Uh, there is no question that I want people, when they spot me anywhere in the state, and uh, with the aid of a red vest, of which I have 14, and uh, never go without it, uh, I want them immediately to say, there is uh, the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. And I think that in part I have achieved that mostly through this process. At the same time, I was attempting to build enrollment in this university. It was about a 5,000 size. My own opinion is that about 9,000 is a good size for all of the resources and student body and faculty necessary to do a major job. And there is no uh, question that I saw this as a recruiting technique and that I still do so that I will get out to uh, commencements in high schools. I want students to associate in part with me. And even though it's not a logical follow-through, it is psychologically true that if for any reason they come out of that uh, commencement situation and say, hey, I buy that or I like that guy, in effect, there is a halo uh, run that says, I also uh, will like that university and therefore I will go there. students have, uh, quite apart from the College of Natural Resources, uh, moved in many cases into direct uh, programs to look into, to help, uh, to provide solutions in this area of natural resources. I think most notably is the National Science Foundation grant here in which we are now comparing two main bodies of water in our immediate area, namely the Dubay area and the Hope Plain watershed. And we have uh, trained students out of the Natural Resources College uh, who are uh, evaluating the quality of that water, who are making the reports, uh, who are able to provide the information and some of the recommended solutions to some of the problems they're finding. And I think the vitality of this involvement uh, is in part not only helping the environment, but I think we are essentially getting to our students the message that this uh, system of self-government does have a system whereby they will put their backs to it and make their contributions, they can affect solutions through the system. And that's a key thing to be teaching today to young people in my mind. The whole notion of moving uh, programs into the field and out of the classroom is related uh, highly to the former Job Corps Center at Clam Lake. Uh, this uh, very uh, large and uh, well-developed and equipped facility has now been given to uh, the University of Wisconsin system and is pretty much uh, under the aegis of the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. And it is here that our students are able to try in the field uh, those things on a practical basis which they've learned as concepts in the classrooms here at Stevens Point.
Ted Stensberg here and Marty Billings are not just shooting any script or any storyline which uh, they happen uh, to feel they'd like to do as a class project. This is a class project. It is part of the mass communications uh, program. But at the time and same time that they're doing that, they are shooting uh, a somewhat prescribed film, at least to the extent that they are making a film for the Portage County Mental Health uh, Association. Often uh, we get some people who say, well, the students are creating this problem or they don't contribute anything. And I hear this on occasion uh, from people within the community, a small number, but the voice is there. And the most obvious thing uh, in terms of the visible uh, obviousness is the uh, blood drive itself. started with students operating this station and we will continue to operate that way as far as I'm concerned uh, until the last decibel goes out of the last transmitter out of the last antenna uh, because of the fact that as a teacher I learned early in the game that students who get into this business by means of doing rather than studying on the, their own in a classroom or a library are those who are most successful so we do see here this function of student involvement uh, secondly, I think there's a very legitimate function for the students in trying to serve uh, the university community and the community as a whole. Um, more and more students uh, are listening to the university radio station. More and more students are beginning to watch the uh, cable television which the students produce of various activities on this campus, and that will grow so that it becomes another channel of communication other than the single print channel of the uh, student newspaper uh, in order to uh, reach students. Uh, but I think, too, in reaching out to the community, here is an interface between this campus and the community 
and my own personal belief that those two should never be separate. And we've had a good town and gown relationship, despite the strain of uh, things uh, that do uh, create conflict within a community. And some of that is due to the radio and television operation by the students. Uh, for example, at Christmas time, the uh, now regular annual Christmas telethon. Uh, each year, the students have been more successful. Uh, I think this past year was somewhere in the area of $6,000 that are raised, essentially, for uh, children's needs at the Christmas time in this community. here of a crisis center which is a community operation it's not uh, just for the university it is essentially uh, for any citizens whether they be young or old who feel a crisis in their life and who feel that they need to talk with someone or to be put into connection within the community with agencies or sometimes just someone who will hear them out sometimes it's just a matter of somebody wants to talk to someone else they want to rap they want to sit down and uh, talk it out, and they want to know there's another human being who will listen with interest and will respond and will uh, argue and will get involved. Thank you. 